Hello, uh, my name is Courtney Brock and I'm the 4-H agent in Lincoln County, Kentucky. And I wanted to do a quick video to help get you started with our uh, crochet project for the week. Um, while we are uh, being healthy at home, uh, Lincoln County 4-H has been offering um, kind of make and take project kits through our 4-H project library. Uh, we're sitting those out front of uh, out in front of our main office door on Metcure Trail in Stanford. And those are one per child and they're free to children. Uh, inside there, you'll find some instructions. You'll find a 4-H enrollment form if you would like to enroll in 4-H and do fun stuff like this all the time even not when we're in the middle of a, a health uh, emergency. Um, and you'll also find a crochet hook and a ball of yarn. Your, bar, your ball of yarn will be much smaller than this one, um, but it should be enough to get you started learning how to crochet. Um, I am excited to share with you what, uh, what I have learned over the years. I've been crocheting since I was maybe eight or nine years old. And then I went on and uh, taught myself to knit and I have been I have been knitting more so recently than crocheting. I like crochet um, because I can move much faster um, at crochet than I can knitting. So I like to use crochet with thicker yarns when I want to make a really quick project like a, a scarf or a hat, a lot of winter items. But there's other um, other things you can make with crochet as well. And we'll talk about those at the end of the video. I did want to show you uh, really quickly if you um, if your kit has a ball of yarn like this, um, we call it kind of call it a yarn cake. Um, and I wanted to make sure you know it may have come apart in the bag. Uh, it may have come apart around the edges. Just wrap those edges. You want to pull from the center. That's why I took some time to roll these up for you guys because these are so much easier when you are um, sitting on the couch or in a chair and you are working with yarn. These are center pull and that's super handy so that your ball of yarn doesn't go everywhere. Um, if you do end up, I had a couple of these left and I, I ran out of time to, to re rewind those. Um, so just be careful because when you pull those, you can see it goes really quickly and um, it gets away from you really fast. Um, and it can pick up lots of dust and stuff on the floor. Um, so if you have one of these, uh, a good idea is to put it in a bowl. Um, this is a special bowl. This is a yarn bowl. Uh, and I bet you can already kind of see the purpose, right? It always has this little trolley thing for you to put the yarn through. And that way when you pull it, the yarn stays in the bowl, doesn't roll all over the floor. And if you're like me and you have a cat, um, that can um, get out of hand really quickly if you've got yarn rolling all over your floor. Um, so hopefully you have yarn like this and you can get started. Um, so I'm going to move our camera around and I'm gonna go over a few instructions on how to get started with the chain stitch and a single crochet so you can start practicing and make some awesome projects for the fair this summer. So we're set up here on the floor and hopefully you guys can see my hands okay. I forgot my tripod at the office, so we're making it work. Um, so the first thing you need to do once you get your yarn and your hook um, out is make a slip knot. That's how most projects start. Um, and obviously I'm right-handed, so I hold the hook in my right hand and the yarn in my left hand, and I control the tension with my left hand. Um, and tension is the hardest um, thing to learn in crocheting and knitting, really, to be honest, um, because how loosely or tightly you work can determine all sorts of, uh, of things, especially when you start making garments and things that need to be a certain size. Um, so really, the reason I gave you guys just a small ball of yarn to start out was so that you can just sit around and practice until your tension is nice and neat and consistent and then you can move on to some fancier projects and other things where you might need more yarn. So let's get started with the slip knot. That's the first part we're going to do. So a slip knot I learned how to make before I knew it was actually called a slip knot. It's a magic knot. That's what I knew it as. Right, so it looks like a knot, but oh, magic, it's gone, right? So a slip knot, um, what I usually do is wrap it around two fingers and hold it there to get like the loop with the tail end going over. And then instead of pulling the tail through, we're just going to reach through and pull a little piece here and make another loop and pull it tight. Okay, I'll show you one more time so you can see it. We're going to pull it through or loop it over top and then pull it through, and you can see I kind of hold it down here to make it nice and snug. This is really handy because this is an adjustable knot, which uh, is um, very important if you have different um, size hooks, so you can make it fit the size hook that you need. So usually I'll, 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 I'll tighten it up a little once I put it on the hook, but you want your hook to be able to slide around. You don't want it so tight that you can't move the hook. That tension is too tight. Your tension can be too tight or too loose. You want to really find the Goldilocks zone where it's just right. All right, so I hold the yarn. Once you get it on your, your slip knot and you've got it on your hook, uh, I hold the yarn in my left hand and I um, lay it over three fingers so I can grip them. And then I pull it around the top of that 
finger. So I'll show you again. But of course, this is just how I hold the yarn. I don't think there's a wrong or right way to hold the yarn when you're crocheting. Whatever works for you to help you get that tension, okay? Like proper tension, right? So three fingers and then over top. That way I can grip it here. I'm holding it down here with this other hand. And then when I get started, I always take these two fingers. I almost always crochet with just this finger out just to hold on that tension. But again, there's no wrong or right way for that. It's whatever works for you. And then I take these two fingers, hold the yarn, and then these two hold this so it's not moving around too much. I know it's kind of tricky. You just have to um, practice and see what works for you, right? So two holding the yarn, these two in the middle holding here, thumb and uh, middle finger, and then pointer finger pointing. That's easy enough, right? So the first thing you want to learn how to do is a chain stitch. So when I first get started, I kind of hold on to my knot here. And chain stitch, all I do is I put the yarn over, grab it, and then I flip it over, right? So I, I'm just grabbing the yarn and pulling it through that hook, that loop, right? So again, you want your tension to be consistent. Right? So you can kind of tell I'm holding it. I'm having to actually pull it through my hand because it is grabbing here and it's getting some tension, right? So do you, you see how those are pretty neat stitches, right? I've been doing this for a long time, right? Yours might not look like that. You might have big loopy stitches and you might have, most of the time people either do way too loose or so tight that they can't get the needle through there. You don't want that. You see the difference about how big these are? These are way too big, okay? You want nice neat, okay? If you can hear that, that's Smitten. She's my cat. She's in there and found a toy. So I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing. As I'm um, as I'm going, she's going to come by here soon with a toy down the hallway. Um, I'm kind of holding it as I go so I can keep that tension. Sorry, my yarn got wrapped around there. All right. So uh, once you start, I would just practice for a while. I would just make a big old chain and practice until I got until I got the right tension and I felt comfortable. Okay, you don't have to go as fast as I did just there. Okay, actually with this thinner yarn, you need to go slow and take your time. So you can kind of see here as I went, I've got all sorts of different tension. You definitely don't want that, okay? You want nice, neat, consistent, okay? The next step, once you've get it, gotten it the size you want, and you can make a big old chain, and the cool part about crochet and all um, crocheting and knitting is it's all just one big piece. Once you run out and you add a piece, uh, you can, but you're not really cutting it, right? So I can practice and make a gigantic chain, and all I got to do is unwrap, is pull. This is the end we were crocheting, and I pull it, and guess what? It all comes apart, right? So practice, practice, practice making that chain stitch until it looks really nice and neat, and you've uh, really got comfortable with it. So I'm going to, before you move on to the next, I'm just going to chain a few stitches, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the basic single crochet. Okay, so I've got a few stitches here. And for single crochet, this is the one we just crocheted. We want to go over one. Okay, this is where we start. Because what you're doing is you're starting your first row. And if you don't skip a stitch here, depending on your pattern, it's going to be really short and then get wide. Okay, that's a tension, right? Uh, if I was doing a double crochet, I maybe skip, skip two and I would crochet in that one. Or, you know, a triple crochet, I would come way over here so that I can build up my corner, if that makes sense. Okay. But for a single crochet, I just need to skip one. And for single crochet, all I got to do, so I just stop chaining. I'm going to skip this one I just chained. So in this one right here, I'm going to put just the hook in, insert hook. This is where if, you've, if you're chained really tightly, it'll be very difficult to get the hook through. That's why it's important. Again, tension. I, to me, this is really good tension because it doesn't just slide around, but it moves easily. Okay. So I put the hook in. Now I have like two loops here. And I want to yarn over and pull it through just the first one, right? So I just pulled the yarn through my chain stitch, really. Now I have two loops, and I'm going to yarn over and pull it through those two. And that is a single crochet. I'll show you again, okay? So I just crocheted in that one. A lot of times people will lose track of their loops, and they'll put two in there. Well, you've just increased your row. So now, you're, now your you know, dishcloth or your scarf is going to be wavy on the sides, Okay, so uh, a lot of times when I crochet, I have to I have to count a lot. So I make sure, like if I know I've chained 10 stitches, I need to do 10 single crochets and then switch and go back, right? So I have a lot of counting when I'm crocheting. Uh-oh, I have a visitor. I don't know if you can see her. That was my house shoe. She's over here. She made a grunty sound. I have a visitor. Okay, sorry. Back to this. Sorry, we got a little distracted. So single crochet in the first stitch. You can see here is where I did. So I need to go to this one next, right? So I just do 
hook in, yarn over, pull it through one, come back, yarn over again, and pull through two. Again, we'll go, I just worked in this one, so I go to the next one, hook in, yarn over, pull it through one, yarn over, pull it through two. So I rarely do a single crochet because it's a small, tiny stitch. And part of why I like to crochet is because I can crochet much faster than I can knit. So when I'm trying to whip up a fast project, a scarf, a hat, something like that, I can usually do, <coughs> excuse me, I can usually do it pretty quick with crochet. So I like to use thicker yarn. This yarn that I have here is really more for knitting. It's um, very thin and I had planned on making socks out of it. Um, so it was just the first thing I grabbed. So again, we're almost to the end. So we do yarn in, uh, yarn, oh, I'm sorry, hook in, yarn over, pull it through one, yarn over, pull it through two. Let's do two more. Insert the hook in our chain stitch, yarn over, pull it through one, yarn over, pull it through two. And then the last one here on the end, yarn over and pull it through two. Now, when I get to the end of that row, I want to chain one. I'm sorry, let me go back so you can see it. I want to chain one here because that I need to build up that edge before I go across the row. Okay, if I don't, it's going to be a wavy whatever it is I'm making here. I don't know, this is pretty tiny. This would be like a belt maybe, right? And so when I go back, it's a little harder because now there's like a little V on top. Okay, and I want to go through, um, so that's the one I just did. So I want to go here and I'm going to go through both of those in the top and then yarn over, pull it through one and yarn over, pull through two. Okay. So again, I want to go through both of those in the top, unless your pattern says otherwise and pull it through. So that's a single crochet. And I would say practice with that one to get you going and you'll have nice densely uh, crocheted fabric here that you're making. Same stitch, all you gotta do is when you get to the end, get, remember to chain one. This is where it's important to count as you go as well, okay? So if I, uh, I didn't even count these, so I don't know how many there are, but I can tell I need to put one more here, right? So you gotta do it on the end. This is where you can really mess up in crochet is your edges can get really weird if you're not counting and chaining the appropriate number. If I'm making a bigger stitch, I might chain two or three here to really build up my edges, okay? So hopefully that was enough to get you guys started. I would say practice your chaining and practice your single crochet, and there should be some more patterns in that book, um, and I'll show you some examples here in just a second. All right, so I thought I would show you a few examples of some projects you can make um, before I let you go for the day and uh, let you get started crocheting. Obviously, uh, one of the things I mentioned was a, a washcloth um, or dish towel. These are really easy to make. This one it was with lots of different scraps of leftover cotton, um, and you can get cotton um, at most apartment stores that carry yarn will have uh, uh, balls of cotton. Um, and this is great for like makeup removal, things like that, but it's really good practice too, because these are just single crochet rows, okay? I ran out of pink, so I attached what I had left of this on the side here and kind of made it a little, uh, a little bigger. Um, this is what I mean by tension. You want your rows to be the same, right? You want it nice and square, so if you fold it, um, you just want everything nice, neat, even, right? So that's a good example. Um, this is a little bit fancier one. You can learn other stitches. This was just the stitch we learned today, single crochet. This one's a little more complicated. It's a shell stitch type pattern. I'll let you see up close. So you can see I put like three double crochets in one hook and then skip some and it's a little more complicated, but it is a very nice stitch, very pretty. This one's a little harder to get correct on your tension though. So you can see one side is a little bit longer than the other here, right? Um, but uh, a lot of people think of crocheting, they think of uh, accessories, like winter um, scarves, hats, gloves, things like that. Um, so I did grab uh, a gigantic scarf I'd made for winter time. Obviously, it's getting much too warm for things like this. So this would be a good time to practice on useful, handy things you can have in your house, like your dish towels. I did want to show you this, though, because um, earlier I had mentioned that the size of your hook correlates to your yarn. So this is a really thick yarn. Uh, so you have a really huge uh, crochet hook and it was super fast. I probably made this in 15 minutes because 
it was um, maybe maybe longer, 15, 30 minutes. Um, but you can see how thick that yarn is. So you need a really big hook. And it was just one big piece, one big piece uh, sewn in a long and then attached, um, I don't know, you can find the end here somewhere and then sewed together. There's our uh, seam in the middle to make it connect. It didn't have to connect. If I had more yarn, I would have made it longer and made like a big blanket scarf, which would have been nice back when it was colder. A uh, few other quick ideas. You can make lots of accessories like baskets. Um, so this I did with two strands of yarn held together to make it really thick so it, it would stand up and hold things. And it, it does have a few random things in here. Um, you can see the bottom is circular, which is really sim similar here at the top is to how you would start a hat and it would come down the sides. Obviously this is much straighter and it has some uh, cute little handles that are really pretty simple to make. The last one, uh, a lot of people like to crochet um, flowers uh, in different shapes. Uh, a lot of times they call them granny squares, which sound really old and um, boring, but are super cute and you can be really creative with them. This is a variation on that uh, to make it look like a, a flower. And this is a hair clip actually. I just hot glued it on there once I was finished. You can have a nice little spring crochet project. So good luck. Um, send me some pictures. Let me know what you guys come up with.